The Maxus e Deliver 9 doesn't quite have the impressive value proposition of its diesel range stablemate, but business customers still get a lot for their money with this ambitious Chinese-made LCV. If profit matters more than polish on your fleet, this contender could be worth a try. Maxus might still be a brand unfamiliar to you. Now it's owned by Chinese manufacturing giant SAIC Motor, who bought out LDV in 2009, then renamed it, and have since set about revolutionizing the LCV product range. Most recently with full EV models, the mid-sized E-Deliver 3, and this large E-Deliver 9. This won't be the first large van you think of when you're seeking an all-electric product in this segment, but it does stack up well on paper in terms of battery choice, equipment and warranty. So it's worth a closer look then. Let's subject it to the usual thorough car and driving road test. So what's it like? Well, you press the start button to be greeted with a Maxxis logo uh, on the little screen between this pair of analog dials in front of you. That's then replaced by a green ready message. But ready for what? Well, a brush of the throttle doesn't exactly hurl you forward, but acceleration from the 201 horsepower motor is quite eager, and it isn't accompanied by anything like as much motor whine as you get with a smaller E-Deliver 3. Uh, once you get going, power is supplied progressively, but top speed, that's limited to just 62 miles an hour, so you won't be doing too many long motorway trips, which would strain the battery range anyway. For this E-Deliver 9, uh, there's a choice of three battery sizes, 51.5 kilowatt hours with 112 miles of combined EV range, 72 kilowatt hours with 146 miles, and 88.55 kilowatt hours with 185 miles. Three driving modes are provided, Eco, Normal, and Power, and even Eco doesn't feel too slothful. Uh, there are three brake regeneration modes as well, and they're operated by moving the gear lever. You move it to the right and go up and down through the brake regen settings. Around the corners, there's not too much in terms of steering feedback, but the low down positioning of the battery pack keeps body roll from getting too aggressive. Uh, like almost all vans, particularly large ones, uh, the cornering demeanor of this one improves quite a bit when you've got a bit of a load in the back. Uh, however, when you're running on empty, it's rather prone to being unsettled over bumps. And whatever your EW9's nines load configuration, uh, you'll certainly feel the larger potholes and tarmac tears that you will come across in typical urban motoring. On the highway, refinement isn't quite as silent as you might expect. Uh, wind noise is noticeable over 40 miles an hour, and you can hear the electric motor, and there's quite a lot of road noise uh, transmitted into the cabin. Uh, when the time comes to slow down, though, you'll be thankful for the reassuring feel of the standard all-round disc brakes. Brake Assist complements the usual ABS system for emergency stops, and ESP stability control, that's standard too. There's nothing much wrong with the way this electric Maxxis model looks. Uh, you wouldn't immediately pigeonhole it as a dated design. It should certainly be large enough for your intended purpose, uh, particularly in this uh, 5,940 millimeter long LH form. Uh, there is also a 5,546 mil long MH version if your carriage needs a slightly more modest. The only thing that differentiates this all-electric model from the diesel-powered range stablemate is the different design of this prominent front grille. Uh, here there's just this black lower grille plate below a central badge which conceals the charge socket. As with the Deliver 9, uh, this appendage is flanked by full LED headlamps plus LED daytime running lights also feature. The rear gets the slim tail lamps and the usual high mounted stop lamps next to the rear view camera fitting. Right, let's take a look inside and climb up into that cab.
We've actually been quite impressed with this eDeliver 9 inside after the rather little feeling experience we had with the smaller eDeliver 3 a few months ago. It's all much more appealing and better finished in this bigger model with an angular dash design that doesn't feel built down to a price. And the central screen looks modern and the fascia is smartly finished in piano black with silver highlights and this cross-hatched uh, inlay panel in the center of the dash. If it weren't for the plastic wheel rim here, you might even feel this was quite upmarket for a van. Now, there are plenty of blanked off buttons near the high mounted gear stick to remind you though of this model's budget brand origins, but everything appears uh, well screwed together and it seems built to last. This feels like a cabin uh, that could withstand the rigors of a hard working life. You won't be expecting tactile plastics around this cabin and you don't get them. But the driver's seat here is actually quite comfortable uh, with plenty of adjustment too. And there are big segment door mirrors along with large grab handles in the A-pillars here. Uh, there is the usual three-person seat arrangement uh, and only a small intrusion into the middle seat passenger's leg space to accommodate this high set gear lever. The floor that's covered with the hard wearing linoleum type material, which should be simple to wipe clean, uh, you get just one old style USB port. It feels a bit more EV like than the eDeliver 3 too. There's a push button starter instead of an old fashioned key slot, although the instrument dials are still defiantly analog. Uh, there are two main binnacle gauges, a power meter on the left and a speedometer on the right. In between them is a compact central screen with information in each of its four corners, range and battery capacity, uh, odometer reading, time and your gear and brake regen settings. Uh, the center of the display shows content that you select via a steering wheel button, battery voltage and current, a taco readout, travel time, maintenance distance, uh, vehicle speed, instantaneous power consumption, average speed, an odometer, trip data and tire pressures. So there's quite a lot. This 10 inch central display looks like the sort of thing you'll get from a much more familiar brand. It's a touchscreen enabled infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, but this monitor does lack a DAB digital radio. And you navigate around it via these left hand frame shortcut buttons for vehicle, phone, radio and media. Uh, pressing the middle home button sees the main screen segmented into music, radio and vehicle segments. The vehicle section is the one you'll be using most regularly, uh, sending you to a power screen showing range and then below readouts for average power consumption and instantaneous current and voltage. Swipe right on that screen and you'll get to sections for tire pressures and comfort and convenience settings. You sit commandingly of course and the central part of this middle backrest folds down to reveal twin cup holders, a pen tray, an elasticated strap and a work surface that'll be ideal for a laptop. Uh, because of the car like styling the dash there's not a huge amount of cabin storage but there is a reasonably large glove box with a narrow cubby just above it. You get smart piano black trimmed cup holders at either end of the dash too. Uh, there's a cubby to the left of the driver's side one. Another small cubby is to the right of the driver's knee and in what seems like a rather uh, anachronistic touch actually near the high mounted gear stick there's a slide out ashtray and a cigarette lighter 12 volt socket. Uh, there are big but narrow door bins with two other cubbies further up on the door card and there's overhead storage too. Now Maxis hasn't forgotten a sunglasses holder and there are ticket clips in each sun visor. It looks like there might be some storage under the passenger bench too but uh, we haven't really worked out how to reach that. <laughs> At the time of this film in winter 2023, Maxis wanted a minimum of £63,000 for the eDeliver 9. Uh, that's in entry level 51.5 kilowatt hour MH standard wheelbase form. Quite a jump up then from the £34,000 price tag of the equivalent Deliver 9 diesel model. So you're going to need to really want the switch to EV. Uh, quite a lot more also than Ford wants for its e-transit. Maxis does offer two longer range batteries 
batteries of 72 kilowatt hour and 88.55 kilowatt hour in size. Uh, Maxxis will also offer you a choice of standard MH and long wheelbase LH panel van body shapes. In addition, tipper, minibus and chassis cab body shape options are also available. And Maxxis has a network of specialist converters who can create from this model variations like ambulances, camper vans and wheelchair accessible models too. You do get plenty of equipment for the money. The eDeliver 9 comes with 16-inch alloy wheels, LED headlights, uh, central locking, keyless entry, all-round parking sensors, a single sliding side door, cruise control and a reversing camera. Uh, in addition, the headlamps have high beam recognition and the side mirrors there are heated. Now inside you'll find a 10 inch uh, central touch screen, you'll get air conditioning, there's an 8 way adjustable driver's seat with an armrest and a multifunction steering wheel too. Uh, now safety kit, uh, that includes an automatic emergency braking system, a blind area monitoring setup and an e-call system uh, which will alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location if the driver's seat airbag goes off. Uh, there is also ESP stability control, electronic braking assistance and a hill holder control too. So let's pull back these wide opening rear doors uh, which swing back incidentally to 260 degrees and take a look in the cargo area. Now as we told you elsewhere in this film, the Maxxis eDeliver 9 is being offered in two body lengths, MH medium which is 5,546 millimetres long or as in this case LH long which is 5,940 millimetres long. The cargo volumes are 9.7 cubic metres for the MH and 11 cubic metres for the this LH version. There's 1800 millimetres of cargo bay width and that narrows to 1366 mils between the wheel arches so a Euro pallet will easily fit. Uh, the MH version has 3019 millimetres of cargo bay length, it's 3413 with this LH version. There's uh, 1,792 mils of cargo bay height, and that's the most you'll get because there's no higher roof height option. Now the payload is 1,200 kilos for the MH 51.5 kilowatt hour version, uh, 1,040 kilos for the MH 72 kilowatt hour variant, and 1,160 kilos for the LH 51.5 kilowatt hour derivative. As standard, there's only one sliding side door and that's here on the near side, but here's a nice touch. This step that glides out when you slide it back. Uh, the aperture width here is 1269 millimeters with 1570 mils of height. Now the cargo area here features a heavy duty bulkhead with a shelf just above it, uh, but there's no option to get a through loading a cargo hatch that would allow you to push long items into the cab. Uh, this Maxxis is built for a tough life and as you can see this test vehicle's already had one. We think this uh, fitted ply lining kit to protect the load bay's inner sides is pretty essential. There's bright LED lighting in the load bay, uh, there are eight tie down points, uh, six of them on the floor, two overhead lights and a non-slip protective floor covering. What about running costs? Uh, well, we gave you the EV mileage range in our driving section. For the 51.5 kilowatt hour versions, it's 112 miles combined and 147 in the city. For the 72 kilowatt hour versions, it's 146 miles combined and 179 miles in the city. For the 88.55 kilowatt hour variants, it's 185 miles and 219 miles in the city. DC charging can be done to 80% in just 40 minutes uh, with some versions if you find the right public rapid charger. All Maxxis vehicles come with a five year warranty or 125,000 miles of cover and include five years roadside assistance as standard. Uh, the battery gets its own separate eight year 100,000 mile warranty. In its standard diesel form, the Deliver 9 has quite a price advantage over the competition. Uh, that's not the case with the eDeliver 9, but you do get plenty of equipment and a wider range of battery choices than rivals can offer too. 
Plus, unlike some competitors, this model's not too compromised in terms of payload by its EV drivetrain, and you get a long, comprehensive warranty. In the future, Maxus, like its rivals, will bring us more sophisticated large electric vans than this, but for the time being, the eDeliver 9 represents a decent start for this Chinese brand's EV aspirations.